Hi, I'm Carlotta Berry, and I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering in a Lawrence J. Giacoletto Endowed Chair of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Rose Holman Institute of Technology. And I'm also a 2022 open source hardware trailblazer. And today I want to talk a little bit about the engineering design process. And this whole video blog is going to be a guidebook for academics to see how they can use open source hardware in their professional development goals. So today I want to connect that to the engineering design process. So first, what is an engineer? So an engineer is a person that uses math and science in order to improve products and processes. And there are lots of kinds of engineers. I'm obviously a controls engineer or robotics engineer, and I'm an electrical engineer. So these are the things that I use to improve um, problems and processes in society. But you could be mechanical, computer science, software engineer. And the, one of the coolest things I like about robotics, which I mentioned in a previous blog post, is because it is so multidisciplinary, you could be any of these disciplines as well as psychology, sociology, social science, etc., humanities, and still do robotics and use engineering and science and STEM in order to improve society. So the key difference between an engineer versus a scientist is scientists study nature and natural processes where engineer uses the knowledge of nature and natural processes to solve problems. So one thing that Theodore von Karman says is that scientists discover the world that exists, engineers create the world that never was. And I would like to propose that by using open source hardware, that's one way for engineers to be able to more quickly crowdsource these solutions these, that will impact society and make them better. By having a community that is able to quickly adapt and modify your work and from work that you can also integrate with others to bring into yours and the sharing of a knowledge base is a quicker way for teams to work together to, to solve these problems. And if it's a diverse multidisciplinary team, research has also shown that those types of teams are more likely to come up with the better solutions that are more impactful as well as that reduce bias. So one of the great things about mobile robotics, because a robot is a machine that is basically designed to complete some mission or some task, given its intelligence through software and the controller, using electronics and sensors in order to make decisions, it marries all of these different disciplines together, like mechanical engineering, electronics, software, human interaction, human robot interaction, and all these multiple disciplines. So already, if you can open source this process of doing robotics, then you're bringing together all these different members of the community together. And you can show that as an academic, your work benefits a broad range of applications as well as people in all of these different fields. And so it's a bigger way for your, to be able to show that your work has impact and it has impact a lot quicker because you're able to quickly deploy your system and have other people test it out and improve it. So the engineering design process has 10 steps that are iterative. And when I teach this to my students, I always tell them it's really a circle. You can always go around it. You sometimes may have to sit, skip a step, but you need to iterate through it until you're able to meet your design specifications. So you always wanna start with identifying a problem or a need. And then you want to research or gather data about the background for existing solutions as well as the problem and how you could solve it. And from that research, you're going to yield your design criteria or requirements or design specifications, as well as possible or potential solutions. Another thing I tell my students is it's very important to be able to take an open-ended or large problem and break it down into steps or subsystems, and then to try to figure out holistically how you integrate those together into a solution. The open source hardware process is another example of doing this, where you take a complicated problem, break it down, and then you share all of those different components with your community, and hopefully that helps you identify ways to improve different components of it or solutions and make it better. So after identifying those potential solutions, you analyze them based upon your design criteria and see which ones most effectively um, are helpful for that, such as in, by using a decision matrix or some kind of strength weakness analysis, etc. Then you develop and test your models, and this all can be done in that open source format. 
And then you select your best design alternative based upon your testing of your models. Then you would do a design review for implementation. That could be another place where open source plays a role, where you invite members of the community to then come in and evaluate your potential solutions to this problem and give feedback, possible improvements of how to improve upon that before you implement your final design. And then finally, you assess the overall performance with respect to your design criteria to make sure you've been able to solve the problem or the need. And so this concludes um, today's video blog on using the en engineering design process and marrying that with open source hardware to discuss how an academic could use that engineering design process as well as their intellectual property and their solutions to integrate the community as a whole, to not only share with a wider audience the work that you do, but also to use them to help identify design criteria, alternative solutions, ways to improve solutions, as well as to be involved in the assessing and testing of your solution. Thank you for coming, and I hope you come back for the next blog post and have a robotacular day.